So in my continuing saga of my Raspberry Pi Zero action camera, this is where we left off with the video from the Raspberry Pi Zero. My gripe with this video was that one, the sky was kind of washed out in color and that the distance details were very blocky, which in this case is pretty needed. As I'm not, the trees were blocky, yes, but I'm also talking about the people down the rink and the pucks. It was very okay to me. It wasn't that great and I felt we could do better. Turns out that might be possible. So doing some research after this, I was looking more into the modes and the various aspects of this camera could record in. I found out that in fact this video is not 1080p. Well, the video is, but what the camera is recording at is not 1080p. In fact, it is 1296 by 972. Now, this is a little weird because the reason why the resolution from the camera is not 1080p is because the image is binned. Now, a very short TLDR of what binning is, basically the camera will use a, in this case, two by two pixel area on the lens or on the sensor and group that together, average it, and make that the actual color at that pixel. So what this does is it allows you to use larger of a sensor area, which in this case we're using the full sensor area. However, you essentially have, in this case because it's two by two, you have your resolution from your camera causing the resolution to, in this case, be less than 1080p. Now the Raspberry Pi does offer a 1080p video coming from the sensor, however, it is non-binned. Now normally that wouldn't be an issue, but this 1080p picture is a much smaller area on the sensor. So if we take this as our original, this was mode 4, which was the 1296 by 972. If we take this as our initial, and we swap it over to the now 1080p, you'll notice that the field of view is much smaller because again, we are only capturing a much smaller area on the sensor. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture these two videos at very identical uh, lighting settings and all that, which I'm sorry, but if you take a look at the more fine detail, many of the trees and the fence, you'll notice that there is actually a lot more detail in this video. However, that detail comes with the cost of the field of view. Now, unfortunately, that field of view is very needed in my case because I need to see as much of the rink as possible. And if you switch over to when I re-recorded our hockey session, however, in 1080p from this mode one, you will notice that you lose a lot of the rink in kind of visibility. Now, while I think this video quality actually looks better to me, and I'm actually more happy with how this looks, especially the distance objects are a little bit better to me, I just am not a fan of how little you can see directly in front of the camera, and to me, that's sort of a deal breaker. I might get saved, however. As I was doing more research on the camera and the modules, I am currently using the PiCam V1 sensor. I have found there are conversion kits for the PiCam V2 that essentially take the PiCam V2's board and just stick a different camera on it. So the cameras on the Pi cameras can actually be popped off and the board that has logic on it can be left there and you can plug in a different camera into that socket. So I found one of those conversion kits online. They're relatively cheap, however, they are still more expensive than the older one, of course and I have stuck it on there and I am now testing with that. What this fixes though is the whole mode and what size on the sensor that mode sees and what it outputs. So again, the version one camera mode four, which had the full sensor area recorded, had the issue where it outputted something that was under 1080p. On the version two camera, mode four outputs in 1640, by 1232, which is above 1080p and actually will get downscaled 1080p when we actually do the recording and conversions in uh, FFmpeg. And so here is that video. This is the Pi Camera V2 with a fisheye lens, about a 160 degree lens, I believe. And I think it definitely looks better. It looks much better than Mode 4 on the V1 camera. That being said, it's still 1080p. Now, this is one of the things I gotta figure out and figure out what I wanna do. So, yes, it's a fisheye lens, it can see more, but the trade off is that the video is still 1080p, and if you were to zoom into the distance, the 1080p with the smaller field of view is gonna be much clearer in the distance just because it is having to capture less in the foreground. Now, 
again, I just I don't know what to do here. The trade-offs are either you see more close up or you get better visuals and better quality down the rink. The trade-off is which is going to be better, which one would I rather choose, I don't know. So in the meantime, while I deal with that, there's also another bug that I need to fix. Now the left and the right are synced up at the start. The left is the GoPro, the right is my camera. Now I've known that my camera has been recording at 30 FPS for a while. That's what I've said it to, that's what it made sense to me, just the 30 FPS, that's kind of the max the camera and the board can handle. What I didn't know, or what I kind of knew, was that the videos I was getting out of FFmpeg or on my computer when I transferred it, they all claimed to be 25 FPS, which I just found really weird, and I wasn't sure fully what the issue is, or if that was an issue, but as you can see here, it is most certainly an issue. If you look on the left and the right, they were originally synced up, however, they are no longer synced up now. And that explains a lot of the issues I've been having, especially when it comes to streaming. When it comes to streaming, I've been having issues with the video falling further and further and further behind. The audio has been fine, but it's always the video just falls further and further behind from the stream. It goes from nearly live streaming to being minutes behind. And I can now finally attribute that to the FPS somewhere along the lines. I'm telling it to record in 30 FPS, which it is doing, however, I don't know if it's FFmpeg or what, but something is taking that 30 FPS and not applying it, and it's simply giving me video in 25 FPS, which when you take 30 FPS, go to 25 FPS, you're losing five frames, but those five frames aren't disappearing. They're simply just being pushed further and further back. So instead of a frame being this time in length, which is 30 FPS, so that's one frame, uh, or sorry, 30 frames every second, one frame is on screen for this long of time, you take that and I switch it to 25 FPS, that's how long a frame is now on screen for at, at a time, there's your issue. You're now slowly falling further and further and further out of sync just because you're showing frames at a slower rate than you should be. So with that in mind, moving forward, that is probably the first thing I'll need to tackle and fix, figure out why I am recording in 30 FPS, but the video I'm getting out is being shown in 25 FPS. Additionally, the next steps, I need to decide upon what sensor and what mode I'm gonna use. So am I gonna use the V1 or V2 camera? What mode am I recording? Just what am I gonna do? Do I want to record in 1080p and lose some field of view, or do I wanna record in the full field of view but lose the quality in the more distant objects? Still not sure, but that's the thing I gotta think about. Also, I'll be designing a case, and depending on which camera I choose, the case will have to come with that. Because unfortunately, the cameras mount on reverse directions, depending on which board I pick. The V1 will be mounted on the back side of the Raspberry Pi, where the V2 is on the front side. So, unfortunately, the decision I make is kind of just kind of the stick, and I'm at the roll with it. So that is the camera update for this project. I know I've been spending a lot of time on this camera and trying to get it perfect. I know I need to kind of just choose one and kind of roll with it, but I know this project really hinges on the camera and how it looks. So sorry that I'm spending a lot of time, but I just, I, I want, I want to make this right. So anyways, thank you guys for sticking along. Hopefully in the future I can figure out this camera issue and we can start moving on to more of the hardware that's not the camera as well as more software to make this just much better and what I'm envisioning it. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Peace out.